The window of tolerance is a term used to talk about levels of alertness, what we can also call activation, that help people engage in their daily life. Every day, it's normal for all of us to move up and down in our levels of alertness. Maybe we watch our favorite sports team on TV and feel very engaged, and our level of alertness is pretty high. Then later on in the day, we curl up reading our favorite book, and our level of alertness is pretty low. It's really normal for people to move up and down throughout the day and to ebb and flow between feeling very alert and not as alert. We are able to move through these different states of alertness and manage them without much difficulty when we are feeling safe. This area is what we call someone's optimal zone. Here, people are able to balance and regulate the emotions coming up for them in ways that are calm, cool, collected, and connected. They are able to encounter stressing or difficult situations and manage their emotions. But what happens outside of our window of tolerance, outside of our optimal zone? This is something that we call dysregulation. Picture a window of tolerance with our optimal zone being in the middle. We often talk about there being two different kinds of dysregulation. One, where we pop out of the top of our window called hyperactivation, and one, where we drop out of the bottom called hypoactivation. Hyperactivation is characterized by things like anxiety, overwhelming emotions, and accelerated thoughts and feelings. Sensations in our bodies that would tell us that we're here are things like increased heart rate, quickened breath, and maybe shaking or sweating. On the other end, hypoactivation is characterized by feelings of numbness or disconnect or lack of energy. Things can feel unreal, far away, or as if we've shut down. When we are in hypoactivation, our bodies experience a decrease in heart rate, slower breathing, and a general lack of physical sensation. Something to make note of is that dysregulation, both hyper and hypoactivation, make a lot of sense as responses to threats. It's what our brains and bodies do automatically to try to keep us safe in the face of real or perceived danger. So what exactly causes people to leave their windows of tolerance? Well, we know that a lot of different things can contribute to the increase or decrease in someone's level of activation. Danger is a primary reason. For example, a loud noise may increase someone's level of activation and send them to the top of their window. Or being in a crowd may make it difficult for some people to stay completely present in the moment, and their alertness may dip into the lower part of their windows. We also know that experiences of trauma can change the size of someone's window of tolerance. Traumatic experiences can reduce the size of someone's window, thus reducing the size of their optimal zone. As we talked about, this is where people can feel like they can manage their emotions in ways that are calm, cool, collected, and connected. Maybe things that used to be easy to handle, like a loud noise or large groups of people, don't feel as manageable anymore. So we know that our windows of tolerance can shrink as a result of traumatic experiences. And our optimal zones can become smaller but there are also ways that we can grow and widen our windows as well. Learning to recognize the signs that we are outside of our window can be the first step in helping us stay in it. Then, practicing ways to intentionally manage our activation can bring us back into our windows when we find ourselves dysregulated. Most people benefit from guidance in this process and you deserve support. And now we know a little bit more about the window of tolerance.